Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. Today I want to talk about pronation. So is pronation something that's um, absolutely necessary on the serve? And can you control pronation or is it something that happens naturally? Also, does pronation give you power on the serve? Well, check out today's video and find out. First, let's clarify what pronation is. So pronation is the inward turning of the forearm. So if I turn my forearm to the left, my hand will pronate from a handshake position uh, to a position where the palm of my hand is straight to the ground. And if you have a continental grip on your serve and you make contact, you're basically pronated. Uh, let me explain how that works. So we go up into the trophy position and now my hand is in a neutral position. And now as I drop the racket down, I will go up towards the ball on edge like this and it's going to remain on edge until my racket tip is pointing straight uh, towards the back fence. And at this position, and my forearm is going to start turning uh, towards the left and I'm going to make contact with the ball uh, somewhere around here. So the most common mistake on the recreational level is serving with a forehand grip. Uh, sometimes with an eastern forehand grip and sometimes with a semi-western forehand grip. So if I'm in a semi-western forehand grip and I come from this position uh, down, I will not be able to uh, drop my racket very low. Maybe I'll get to about right here. And so from here, uh, there's absolutely no uh, pronation. You see my hand, my forearm is not turning inward. You see there's no pronation uh, because of this uh, compromised grip. So by turning the racket into a continental grip, and from the same position, uh, just by making contact, my hand will pronate into the correct position. Is it possible to have no pronation even in a continental grip? Uh, yes, it is. And many recreational players will have this position when the tip of the racket is pointing towards the back fence. This is after we have dropped the racket and we're coming up to the ball. Uh, players will open up too early. And now from here, uh, they will basically go like this into the ball. And this is something that's very difficult to correct because this is in the acceleration part of the serve and it takes many years to correct uh, this uh, flaw in the technique. What needs to happen is the racket has to be in this position on edge as the tip of the racket is pointing towards the back fence and then we get this rotation, uh, inward rotation of the forearm and pronation into the contact. Unfortunately, uh, recreational players will not be aware that they're doing uh, this movement uh, prior to contact because there is so much acceleration being generated, even with serves struck at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, uh, soft serves, uh, still it's too much acceleration for our brain to process and players will not be aware that they're doing this. On the same token, professional players or high level players will also not be aware that they're doing this movement uh, at the same spot because there's even more uh, acceleration there and it's just too short of an amount of time uh, to be able to feel this position. How do we fix this problem? So we have to make sure, number one, that we're in a continental grip. Number two, that the racket drop is solid. And then number three, it just has to be a lot of repetition. It has to be uh, tens of thousands of reps uh, to be able to have the correct on-edge position prior to contact. What most people refer to as pronation is what happens after contact. And so we have already pronated just to make contact in a proper uh, position here. So most players on most serves, not all serves, will have the strings and the palm of the hand uh, going towards the outside. And some will do this so extremely that the strings are actually facing towards the sky. Uh, John Esner is so flexible uh, that uh, he has this position on some of his serves. So is this continuing pronation something that we should practice? Well, absolutely not, because first of all, we're not aware that we're doing it. The only way we would be aware of this continuing pronation is if we slow the serve uh, way down to something like 10 to 30 miles an hour. Then yes, of course, we can feel uh, what's going on and we can, uh, we can manufacture this continuing pronation. However, once we start building in more speed into our serve, uh, this time frame here is so small. You're talking milliseconds. There's absolutely no way for us to make a change and make this happen in that moment. So therefore, our mind should never be on this continued pronation uh, and therefore we should let it happen naturally. If you were to practice pronation, this would be 
very tedious way to practice it. Since a coach cannot see continuing pronation, this happens too fast, uh, since a player uh, cannot feel this continuing pronation, you would have to record every single serve in slow motion, and after every single serve, you would have to watch and check, okay, uh, did I pronate here? And this is not how you develop a big serve. Uh, there needs to be a lot of repetitions in serving. You have to serve baskets of serves multiple times a week if you want to develop a powerful serve. And pronation just simply does not come into play when it comes to good serving. So I'm going to hit a serve uh, real hard and I'm going to go through with you what I'm conscious of and what I'm not conscious of. So let's hit one. Okay, so um, this is all muscle memory. So I'm not really thinking about much, but I was very focused to see if I can feel this pronation. And where I regain consciousness is maybe around right here. When the racket comes here, this is where I start feeling the racket again. And of course I feel the contact with the ball and there's pressure being applied uh, to my hand, but I, this time span is so short, I'm not exactly sure that I was on edge. I'm not exactly sure that I was doing this afterwards. I know that once my racket comes here, I can then continue to finish. Uh, but let's say from the racket drop into this position, time span is too short and that, that part of the stroke is completely intuitive. What will happen if you make this continuing pronation happen uh, by force, uh, you will do it too late. And that's what I like to call fake pronation. So let me show you what that looks like. So if a player hits a serve and you see something like this, somewhere around here, see, once that player reaches awareness of the serve, he regains consciousness of it, and then he will make this happen, but this is way after the serve. And you know that the professional players, uh, most of the time, do not finish uh, this way. Uh, they will continue to pronate after making contact here, and then the racket will usually uh, come back around this way. Does pronation generate uh, racket head speed? Uh, yes, it does. But we have to make sure that we put this in the proper context. Uh, so the actual pronation, which is uh, the part of the serve where uh, the racket at this position, uh, the tip of the racket is pointing towards the back fence, our hand is in a neutral position, the strings are pointing to the side fence, and uh, this part is the pronation that matters. Uh, this piece here uh, gives us more acceleration into the ball. Uh, what happens with the continuing pr pronation happens after contact, and that does not uh, produce more power. What many, many recreational players have a problem with is opening the racket uh, too early at this particular moment where the tip of the racket is pointing towards the back fence. And in this case, uh, there's no pronation happening. Uh, they might be pushing into the ball this way. And even if they continue going like this, uh, this is a serve uh, that's greatly inferior uh, to a serve with true pronation. And you got to remember that all high level players have this position of the racket on edge uh, prior to contact. But do not worry about pronation. Make sure that you have all the fundamental pieces of your serve working first. The toss, the backswing, make sure you have a correct grip, a strong trophy position, make sure that your rhythm and timing is accurate, and then uh, at the very end make sure that you're using your body uh, uh, properly to achieve maximum power. So once all these fundamental pieces are synced in and working together in unison, uh, then this pronation will occur naturally. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that like button and leave a comment in the section below. I will be happy to respond. I'll see you next time.